God repeat. Tat. That. Asmasharan. The steel frame. Hridayam. Heart. Heart. Bada idam. Certainly that. Yat. Which. Grihamanaha. In spite of chanting. Harinama, the holy name of the Lord, Jai, by concentration of the mind, Na, does not, Vikrita, Vikrieta, change, Ata, thus, Yada, when, Vikaraha, reaction, Netre, in the eyes, Jalam, tears, Gatra Raheshu, at the pores, Harshaha, eruptions of ecstasy. Translation Certainly that heart is steel framed, which, in spite of one's chanting of the holy name of the Lord with concentration, does not change, even when one displays such signs of transformation as tears in the eyes and ecstatic standing of the hairs on end, uh, responsibly. Certainly, Certainly, that heart is steel framed, which in spite of one's chanting the holy name of the Lord with concentration does not change, even when one displays such signs of transformations as tears in the eyes and ecstatic standing of the hairs on end. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. We should note with Prophet We should note with Prophet that in the first three chapters of the second canto, a gradual process of development of devotional service is being presented. In the first chapter, the first step in devotional service for God consciousness by the process of hearing and chanting <coughs> has been stressed. And a gross conception of the personality of Godhead in his universal form for the beginners is recommended. By such gross conception of God through <coughs> the material manifestations of his energy, <coughs> one is enabled to spiritualize the mind and the senses and gradually concentrate the mind upon Lord Vishnu, the Supreme, who is present as the super soul in every heart and everywhere, in every atom of the material universe. The system of Pancha Upashana recommending five mental attitudes for the common man is also enacted for this purpose, namely gradual development, worship of the superior that may be in the form of fire, electricity, open paren electricity, close paren, the sun, the mass of living beings, Lord Shiva, and at last the impersonal super soul, the partial representation of Lord Vishnu. They are all nicely described in the second chapter, but in the third chapter, further development is prescribed after one has actually reached the stage of Vishnu worship or pure devotional service. And the mature stage of Vishnu worship is suggested herein in relation to the change of heart. The whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of the living being in the matter of his eternal relation with the Supreme Lord as a subordinate servant, which is his eternal constitutional position. So, with the progress of devotional service, the reaction of change in the heart is exhibited by gradual detachment from the sense of material enjoyment, by a false sense of lording it over the world, and an increase in the attitude of rendering loving service to the Lord. Vidhi bhakti, or regulated devotional service, by the limbs of the body, namely the eyes, the ears, the nose, and the hands, and the legs, as already explained herein before, is now stressed herein in relation to the mind, which is the impetus for all activities of the limbs of the body, is expected by all means 
that by discharging regulated devotional service, one must manifest the change of heart. If there is no such change, the heart must be considered steel frame. For it is not melted even when there is chanting of the holy name of the Lord. We must remember that hearing and chanting are the basic principles of discharging devotional duties. And, and if they are, uh, sorry, and if they are properly performed, the basic principles of, cha of discharging devotional duties, and they are, uh, hmm, and they are properly performed, there will be following the reactional ecstasy with signs of tears in the eyes and standing of hairs on the body. These are natural consequences and are the preliminary symptoms of the bhava stage, which occurs before one reaches the perfectional stage of prema, love of Godhead. If the reaction does not take place, even after the continuous hearing and chanting of the holy name of the Lord, it may be considered to be due to offenses only. That is the opinion of the Sandarva. In the beginning of chanting the holy name of the Lord, if the devotee has not been very careful about avoiding the ten offenses, ten kinds of offenses at the lotus feet of the holy name, Certainly, the reaction of feelings of separation will not be visible by tears in the eyes and standing of the hair on end. The Baba stage is manifested by eight transcendental symptoms, namely, inertness, perspiration, standing of hairs on end, <clears throat> failing, falling of the voice, failing of the voice, trembling, paleness of the body, tears in the eyes, and finally, trance. The Nectar Devotion, a summary study of Srila Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, explains those symptoms and vividly describes other transcendental developments, both in steady and accelerating manifestations. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has very critically discussed all these bhava displays in connection with some unscrupulous neophytes, imitating the above symptoms for cheap appreciation. Not only Vishwanath Chakravarti, but also Srila Rupa Goswami has treated them very critically. Sometimes all of the above eight symptoms of ecstasy are imitated by the mundane devotees, prakritaha sahajyas, but the pseudo symptoms are at once detected when one sees the pseudo devotees addicted to so many forbidden things. Even though decorated with the signs of a devotee, a person addicted to smoking, drinking, or illegitimate sex with women cannot have all the above mentioned ecstatic symptoms. But it is seen that sometimes these symptoms are willfully imitated. And for this reason, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti accuses the imitators of being stone-hearted men. They are sometimes even affected by the reflection of such transcendental symptoms. Yet they still do not give up the forbidden habits. They are, then they are hopeless cases for transcendental realization. When Lord Chaitanya met Srila Ramananda Roy of Kabor on the bank of the Godavari, the Lord developed all these symptoms, but because of the presence of some non-devotee Brahmins who were attendants of the Raya, of the Roy, the Lord suppressed these symptoms. So sometimes they are not visible even in the body of the first class devotee for certain circumstantial reasons. Therefore, real steady bhava is definitely displayed in the matter of cessation of material desires, shanti, open paren shanti, close paren, utilization of every moment in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, avyarta kalavatyam, from Madhyalila, Chaitanya Charitamrita, 23rd uh, chapter, 18th and 19th verses. Eagerness for glorifying the Lord constantly Namagane Shadaruchi from Chaitanya Chaitamrita Majalila 23 and 20, uh, 23rd verse and 32nd uh, to the 32nd verse. Attraction for living in the land of the Lord, Pratistha Visate Stale, complete detachment from material happiness, Virakti, open paren Virakti, close paren, and pridelessness, open paren Mana Shunyata, uh, end paren. One who has developed all these transcendental qualities is really possessed of the bhava stage, as distinguished from the stone-hearted imitator of mundane devotees. 
The whole process can be summarized as follows. The advanced devotee who chants the holy name of the Lord in a perfectly offenseless manner and is friendly to everyone can actually relish the transcendental taste of glorifying the Lord. And the result of such realization is reflected in the cessation of all material desires, as mentioned above. The neophytes, due to their being in the lower stage of devotional service, are invariably envious, so much so that they invent their own ways and means of devotional regulations without following the acharyas. As such, even if they make a show of constantly chanting the holy name of the Lord, they cannot relish the transcendental taste of the holy name. Therefore, the show of tears in the eyes, trembling, perspiration, or unconsciousness, etc., is condemned. They can, however, get in touch with a pure devotee of the Lord and rectify their bad habits. Otherwise, they shall continue to be stone-hearted and unfit for any treatment. A complete progressive march on the return path home, back to Godhead, will be uh, depending on the instructions of the revealed scriptures directed by a realized devotee. End of the purport. Mukam karoti vachalam pangam lungayate girim yat kripa taraham bande shuguru dinatarane. Prabhupada spent a lot of time writing purports in the Chaitanya Tattamrita, especially distinguishing between a, a genuine spiritual spirituality and uh, um, counterfeits. Spent a lot of time, sometimes he would call the, the Mayavadis uh, demons or I impersonalists or, uh, or uh, you know, uncultured people. So some, he was very strict about what is the difference between devotional ecstasy and pure devotional ecstasy and imitation. Uh, and it's described also somewhere in the, in the Bhagavatam that, that uh, tears are, are actually measured by some of the Goswamis, whether they're hot tears or cold tears. Cold tears are, are usually tears of <coughs> ecstasy <coughs> and devotion, and hot tears are uh, tears of anger and grief. Uh, I don't know how they arrive at these, these calculations, but, uh, or if these things are actually measured by a thermometer, but they, they have written <laughs> such things. Uh, it's, it's there. Um, and there's such a thing as alligator tears, tears that are uh, uh, sort of faked. They're, they're, uh, they're not really tears. There was an instance of a man who came to the, the temple in 1967 in, in Pico Boulevard in Los Angeles who uh, had tears in, us, in his eyes as he was uh, making his two or three rupee donations into the hundi box. Uh, but he was sentimental, and, when, and we never saw him again. And we never heard of him again. And, and when we t uh, told the Prabhupada about the incident, he said it was an example of sentimentality. Sometimes there are tears in the eyes, and sometimes th there are hairs standing on end. Uh, but as uh, Prabhupada has mentioned, and as the verse says, that uh, if, if they're not genuine, if they're, if they're not um, in the indicative of a change of heart, uh, they, they uh, are imitation only. And it's, there's always a fine line between sentimentality and the, the genuine thing. Um, people who are very good at acting sometimes have to, to um, pre pretend they're other people. There, there's a, a, uh, an English, Englishman who won the Academy Award, I think, three times for his expertise in acting. Daniel Lewis Day or Day Lewis, something like that. Anyway. He was uh, so, so much of, of an imitator, so much of a, of a person who lived the part of the, the role that he played, that uh, he, he wouldn't change during the whole time that the film was being made. In fact, uh, one of the, the stories about his life is that he played the part of a person who was wheelchair ridden. And he wouldn't get out of the wheelchair during the entire filming. And he had to be carried above the directors and, and uh, other people, uh, continuity people who were watching on the set. He had to be carried, the wheelchair and him in it had to be carried over their heads before he would act on the set. He was uh, so uh, inclined not to what they call in, in, in the uh, Hollywood industry, breaking character. So because he was so good at it, because he lived the part of the, of the, of the person that he played, uh, he, was, he, he, he won many awards as a great actor. 
uh, plays and dramas are very much a part of the uh, Krishna consciousness movement. Prabhupada tells a story about when he was acting, I think he was playing the part of Advaita Acharya or uh, somebody, Nityananda. At, at any rate, uh, the, the, um, the people who organized this, um, speaking of organization, I want to thank Premanjali and, and uh, Ananda Kirtan for organizing this, this event. It's a very, um, very uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, and they deserve a lot of credit for putting the whole thing together. So anyway, these uh, tears are sometimes faked. And uh, I, I saw that some people, uh, or actors, who, who uh, are act, lady actors, men actors, they put uh, pellets in the, in the uh, part of the eye, very fragile pellets like water balloons, and when they blink, they cause the, the, uh, the container to break and tears to form in the eyes. <laughs> because they, they don't actually live the part. Uh, of, they don't force themselves to cry. Although a very good actor can do that. Anyway, Prabhupada was, was playing the part of, of a, a great devotee. And they, the uh, people who organized this drama were uh, intent upon making it a very first class drama. It was done in Bengal. And Prabhupada was a very young man, and the, the uh, playwright was quite a famous playwright. And they developed a kind of dislike of this man, because he not only told them how to say things, but how they should look and how they should act when other people were talking. And they just thought it was you know, too, too excessive, too much. And they developed a kind of dislike of this man. And they, they rehearsed and rehearsed for almost one year, for a very long time. And uh, they, they, the actors, who were all young boys, they had no idea why he was being so strict and making them say things and, and act in a certain way and move their bodies in a certain way. So they developed this dislike of the man. And then came time for the, the, uh, the actual drama to be enacted before an audience. And they saw people in the audience weeping. And then they realized that, they, that the, the playwright was, was telling them how to act because he wanted to, he wanted to uh, get the audience to respond in a, in a very emotional way. And, that, and then they realized that, that this man, although he was very, very strict with them, uh, was actually a, a very talented playwright because he knew exactly how to, how to move the audience. The audience thought that they were real people and uh, they were moved to tears. So that happened, actually. And then there's, there, there's a, a, a phenomenon called alligator tears. Maybe you've heard of that, this, that people that, that force themselves to look like they're crying and they, they really don't mean it. And it so happened once that uh, a devotee, and when I f first moved to the uh, Los Angeles temple, it was around 1966 or 67, 68, um, a devotee who was only 18 years old wanted to, uh, she was told by her mother that her grandmother was, was, was very ill and dying and, and that she should come to her home and see her. This devotee, this 18-year-old devotee was a, a new, newcomer in the, in the uh, new Dwarka Los Angeles temple. So, but she knew that, 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 that it might be dangerous to go back to her parental home and see her grandmother. So, she, and, uh, and, and she, was, she had a fiance and they were about to marry and, uh, they, and I said, well, if you stay together, there's probably not going to be any danger. That was my advice to her. So they, they both went to the door, and the mother came to the door, and uh, she was crying, alligator tears. I mean, she forced herself to look like she was crying. And the first thing that this, this uh, young girl said to her mother is, where's Granny? And then, without answering that question, she turned to her fiancé and said, can I just speak with my daughter alone for a few moments, and then, then uh, you can come in the house together. So, so reluctantly, he left the, the place and went down to his car in the front of the house. And just at that moment, we found out later what had happened, uh, she was grabbed by, by not only her mother, but her father and her, her sister and her, her, her brother-in-law. And uh, then she knew the whole thing was just a, a, a ruse, that there was no sick grandmother. She wasn't even in the house. Anyway, that was the, the, uh, the uh, deprogramming phenomenon. And uh, what, what occurred after that is that they, they, they uh, 
hurried her into a, a car and her, her brother-in-law sat on her to make sure that she wouldn't escape and they drove north uh, about, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 miles, 40 miles, how is that in kilometers? About 60 kilometers to a place where, where the parents had hired professional deprogrammers to convince this young girl not to be Krishna conscious. So they, they, con they uh, thought they had her convinced and she, had, she told them that she was convinced that she wasn't going to go back to the ever Krishna consciousness movement, ever back to the temple. And she told them that she just needed to clear her head and she wanted to take a little walk. So it was daytime. This had gone on for three days. And, and during the walk, uh, when she was uh, out of sight of the house, she began to run and she knew that she was, uh, they attempted to deprogram her, which they didn't. And then she ran and ran. And, the, uh, and finally came to over a hill and finally came to a road and the first thing she saw was a police car. And she thought, well, the, 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 uh, the relatives have, have, have realized that the, the deprogramming failed. The police are going are gonna to take me back to, to prison. So, they, but it wasn't the case. And, and she, she tried to hide from the police. She, uh, uh, tried to hide in a, in a uh, ditch near the road and that didn't work. So the police came out of their car and they asked her what, what was the problem. And then she told them the whole story. And un, unbeknownst to the relatives, they were kind of innocent about the whole thing. And they thought that, that she was uh, genuinely, th that they were trying to, to convince her that she wouldn't follow Krishna consciousness. And it was the alligator tears that convinced her that, that uh, she should be alone with her mother. So, the, the, to, to make a long story short, they took her to the police station. She phoned the, the temple in Los Angeles from the police station. And uh, she was then, in a police air, uh, escort, flown to Los Angeles, which was a fair distance away, and she had escaped. And it became a kind of a, you know, a, a, a um, celebrated case, a, a failed deprogramming and, and they, how the girl got returned to her natural habitat. And they, the two of them, about a week later, got, uh, got betrothed formally in the temple and it was, a, it was a very grand event. Even though some of the relatives tried to stop the whole thing, they, they, uh, it was, they had the place decorated. Something like this temple is decorated now, very, very uh, elaborately for the wedding. But it was alligator tears that convinced this, this per person. So there's always a fine line between, between um, uh, genuine tears in the eyes and, and tears of love and devotion. There was a case, and I mentioned this in my last class, of uh, the, the, one of the pseudo-Vaishnava sects. There's 13 pseudo-Vaishnava sects. One of them was, was brought to Los Angeles by uh, Bob Dylan's manager. And uh, it was thought that they would perform in, in one of the biggest ballrooms where all the hippies used to congregate on weekends. And they did. Um, and, and after they performed, they, they, uh, one of them uh, was uh, a, a, a kirtan leader. At a, at a, at a, it, there were maybe a maybe hundred people in the, in the, in the room. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was formerly a theater called the, the Hate Theater. It was called the Straight Theater. All the, 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 the sitting seats were removed. And it was used as a kind of a ballroom. Anyway, this uh, pseudo Vaishnava started spinning around and, and, and uh, fell into what looked like a trance. And uh, he, the, the people in, in, the, in the room thought that, that, it was, that he was genuine and they started to, to talk with him and came up to him and ministered help to him. And, and, uh, and then the, the following day, and nothing much happened, and I think gradually he, he uh, arose and, and became normal and, and came to so-called consciousness. And then the next morning, uh, the Prabhupada was there. It was in San Francisco in about 1967 or 68. He asked the devotees what had happened. And, uh, and they told him that this man was, was chanting and he fell down and, into a trance and, and many people were, were trying to revive him. But I kind of suspected that this person was a, a fraud. And uh, I, I mentioned to Prabhupada that he, he seemed to be imitating Lord Chaitanya. And, and Prabhupada didn't say anything for a while and then he said, that you should have said, my dear Chaitanya, and then kicked on his face. And he kicked, and he made the gesture of kicking with his leg, <laughs> kicked on his face. So I felt very uh, exonerated and, and, uh, and like, like it was worth telling the truth, even though it was, it was kind of a dismal situation. But people are easily fooled by the, the uh, 
alligator tears and, and trances and, and like it's said in this verse that uh, if, if a heart is not changed it becomes steel framed and the word steel framed is used in the verse as ashma saram, steel framed that unless there is a, a, a transformation in the, in the feeling uh, and I, I know this is not kind of an improper thing to say at, at, a, at a, a kirtan gathering like the Shravanam kirtan uh, but, but it's true that if that that that, uh, that if if there isn't a change in the heart, uh, th there can be a great loss. Uh, it can just be music. And there was a time when I was uh, uh, visiting Vrindavan when I w there was two three people. I think they were from that part of the world. Uh, one was playing harmonium and, and one was playing redunga and one was playing kartals and they were singing. And uh, I went to, and it was kind of uh, amplified throughout this, this area of Vrindavan uh, on the Parikram path. Not on, right on the Parikram path, but just off the Parikram path. And so I went to see what was all the, all the, the uh, who was making this very, very delectable music. And it, it, they were kind of like showmen. They're, one of them had a harmonium around his neck and the other one had a, a, a mridanga around his neck and the other one had kartals. And they, they put on a very, uh, very uh, enlivening show. And I could see that they weren't the real thing, but they were chanting, and at least they were chanting, and that was very nice. I think in some cases where uh, Western instruments are used, like those of Indra Swami, who sometimes uses a saxophone, a bass, and a, 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 a trumpet, that in a way that's pure chanting, because his notion is, is to change the hearts of the chanters. Uh, and there was also a, a recording made in uh, uh, approximately 1969 by George Harrison, in which a professional arrangement had been done, had been done using cellos, uh, violas, violins, flutes, orchestral bells, a harp, organ, and uh, Prabhupada liked that song very much, even though it, he was using a lot of Western instruments. In fact, there was a drum beat. It was kind of a rock and roll beat throughout the thing. It was very classical, but there was a kind of a rock and roll beat. So uh, the devotees didn't want to play it for Prabhupada because they thought it's just too, too, uh, too material. And not only that, but a, a, a lady was leading the kirtan. So they thought not to, not to let Prabhupada hear it. And then uh, it so happened that Prabhupada was in, in Los Angeles in New Dwarka, sitting on his Vyasa san during a Vyasa puja. And he asked the devotees, he said, I've heard the devotees in England made a, a recording of Govinda Mari Purusham, but I, I would like to hear it. And they said, well, you don't really want to hear it, Prabhupada, because it's got a lady's voice singing and, and it's not appropriate. So Prabhupada said, well, I want to hear it. And he said, well, we can't play it now because there's no turntable in this temple. But there was a turntable. And they used that turntable to play uh, devotional songs. And, and they were blasted out of these very large speakers, larger than that speaker, about three times that size, and they were in the front of the temple. So Prabhupada insisted, and they, they very reluctantly found this record. It was a 45 record uh, recording, uh, 45 RPM. And they put it on the turntable, and they, they played it, and it really blasted out really loud out of these speakers. And all eyes were glued to Prabhupada to see what he, how he was going to react to the first time he'd heard this song. And, uh, all eyes were glued to him, and they, they watched him, and he didn't say anything. But as, as it reached sort of the climax, about three quarters of the way through, they saw big tears streaming down his cheeks, and not another word was said about that song. Prabhupada liked it so much, and then he ordered right then and there that that recording be played in every temple all over the world at the time of, of greeting of the deities, and that's still happening. And then, in, uh, later on, uh, this is a, I'm going to read from a letter that Prabhupada wrote to a devotee. This devotee was an accomplished musician and he, he en envisioned that it was actually wrong to play that song uh, because, because it had a female leading the, the kirtan. So this is the letter that, that Prabhupada wrote to him. He said, please accept my blessings, dear so-and-so. I won't mention his name because he's probably thought better of this now if he's still alive. Please accept my blessings. I beg to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated December 2nd, 1975. No, exclamation point. You have made some discovery. All along, you have been hearing the recording of Jamuna Devi, and now you want to change. It is not ordinary singing. It is concert. Many people are singing it. So it is not bad. 
Just like Sankirtan, many voices are there, men and women. So it is the same thing, Sankirtan. I approve of it. Here, in Krishna Balaram Temple, and Prabhupada was in Vrindavan when he got this letter. Here in Krishna Balaram Temple, we are hearing the same recording every morning. So if it is good here, why not there? I hope this letter finds you well, your ever well-wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. And that is the letter that Prabhupada wrote to this devotee. Uh, after, after a few years, he was just saying that it's, it's, it's improper to, to play this recording. So it indicates that Prabhupada had to, to fight every inch of the way to, to do things in, 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 uh, in his land of birth. Uh, not only was, it, was the song being led by a, a female, which was sort of uh, verboten in, 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 in many of the Vaishnava temples in, in Vrindavan, but it had a rock and roll beat in the background. There was a drummer playing kind of a, you know, a, a rock beat. So, but nonetheless, Prabhupada per persevered, and this, this song was played day after day in that temple, and it's as we play it here now, it's played all over the world. And in 1977, when Prabhupada was en route in a car to Conway Hall, in 1977, it was just about three months before he departed, he told the devotees in the car that he really liked that song. And he asked them if, uh, if uh, he could hear it again. And because he was in England or something, it made him say that. I don't know why he said it, but he said he really liked that song. So this indicates that sometimes uh, even though Western instruments are used, if there is a, a genuine change in heart, and this was indicated by Srila Prabhupada, things can be done that way. There's, it, uh, in, in Madhurya Kadambani, the, uh, by Vishwanath Chakravarti, uh, he talks about ruchi, the different stages of ruchi or enthusiasm, and one of them is, is when there are, uh, when, when the singing or the, or the picture is not particularly uh, beautiful or you know uh, 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 of high quality, but if there is definitely a, a feeling of devotion, that is very good. And then the uh, second kind of ruchi is is uh, is uh, referred to as the kind of ruchi when there is what what uh, what Vishwanath Charakavarti called excellence of elements. It's music, but it's played very expertly, or it's a painting, and it's, it's done very expertly. And he said that's another kind of ruchi that is, is also bona fide. So whether it's, it's uh, um, expertly done or whether it's imperfectly done by a, a young person, uh, it, it's all devotion. Uh, there's an instance where Prabhupada was on an airplane that was flying from New York to London, and on the back of the seat in front of him, he had a picture. The picture was painted by a, a four or five year old child. It wasn't a, a very excellent painting. It was a finger painting or a, a pencil drawing of Krishna. And uh, Prabhupada gazed at that picture for the whole flight. It was about an eight hour flight or four hours. And he was just looking at that picture because he knew that it had devotion. Even though it wasn't very expertly done and it was done by a young child, the, the uh, picture had so much devotion that, that uh, Prabhupada liked it and he, he just gazed at that picture through the whole flight. So we, we, uh, sometimes we hear about people or we read about people in Chaitanya Chaitanya Tamrita that were very great devotees and their eyes were always like rivers. They were always moist. They were always meditating on Krishna. And this is a stage that, that, that it's a very hard thing to obtain but it's, it's part of this, what called, Prabhupada calls a gradual process in devotion. And, uh, and he referred to his disciples as, very often, as students, just beginners, novitiates or rookies, people that, that you know, it would may take them many lifetimes to come to the, to the stage of, of, of prema, uh, beyond the stages of, of bhava, and have their eyes always full of tears. That's a, a and then there was a, 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 a um, I was in Los Angeles at this time, a, uh, an event called the Road Show. You, some of you may have know, known about this. It was in the days before there were cell phones and videos. So, so a presentation was made to Prabhupada with slides, slides of what the Road Show looked like. And the Road Show had a lot of music in it, had a lot of singing and a lot of dancing and a lot of drama. People dressed like Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna in it. And, uh, it, the whole presentation lasted about 15 minutes and Prabhupada actually enjoyed it. He liked it. It was not only um, 
slides, but they had music also. They were either playing music or they had recorded some music and Prabhupada got a, a full presentation of what the road show was like. And they told him that one of the people who, who came to the road show was a, a, a producer, of a New York stage producer, and that he thought that this was the kind of thing that a Broadway musical should be made of, and that it would play in, in Broadway in New York for several weeks. And they told Prabhupada that, and he was very impressed. The next day, uh, devotees started playing guitars and drum sets in the, in the temple compound. And when Prabhupada heard about this, he was very disturbed. He said, they are, they are imitating. They're not uh, actually uh, you know, doing this out of devotion. They're doing it because they saw that people in the road show were doing it, and they're imitating those people. And so he, he made a directive. He said, from now on, we'll only use kartals and redunga, not even harmoniums. He was, so the pendulum sort of swung back the other way from, from doing things in, with elaborate uh, musical production to very simple kirtans. So Prabhupada seemed to know that people that were imitating weren't, weren't doing it out of, out of love of kirtan, but out of love of the music. And uh, that, that happened. So uh, I, I guess we have about five more minutes, so if you have any, any comments or questions, go ahead. Of course, I, 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 I don't mean to put the damper on anyone who chants Hare Krishna is doing a good thing, uh, whether it's or with, with guitars or, or, or trumpets or saxophones or whatever. It's a good thing because at least they're chanting Hare Krishna. But if they continue to do it only for the sake of, of musical excellence and nothing else, and then they, their hearts remain steel framed. So that's the, 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 the purport of, of what Prabhupada wrote in the, in the uh, second canto. That you can, uh, that kirtan is very wonderful and very beautiful, and, and it's for everyone. But it, that if it's if it doesn't develop into devotion, it can it can devolve into something very uh, very materialistic. So I, I hope that's not not uh, going to put a damper on 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 the the events of the festival because the festival is a very wonderful thing, and uh, it, it that many people have joined the Christian consciousness movement because of kirtan because they 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 uh, like the sound of the, of the mantra. And uh, it's, so it's very beneficial. Yes? Uh, when I was uh, helping have the story in Google Beach in 67, uh, we were packing Prabhupada's bag before he left the airport. He was walking up and down and chanting. The one devotee downstairs was leading Kirtan of the Kirtan, famous devotee in Australasia. Prabhupada stopped walking and he said, Who is that? And Harasuri says, Oh, no, the 20 of disciples, uh, Hari Man, it was Hari Mama. Prabhupada says, Very nice. <laughs> and he just stopped and listened. There's and, a, a, yeah. a famous incident where some a group of devotees thought that, that, uh, we were, that ISKCON people were too aggressive and they shouldn't be approaching people, they shouldn't force them to, to take books. He called it force. And uh, he said that they should just come to, you know, the books like in bookstores. You know, if they if they browsing and they have to like the looks of something, they can take it. So so uh, th that was their position, and Prabhupada seemed to approve of it, even though it was you know a little different. And and then after they left the room, he uh, he said to his devotees, "Just see the hypocrisy." <laughs> but he liked it because they were at least chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. So when Prabhupada arrived at the airport, he got that same devotee. He says, this devotee can hit the kirtan, just with the kirtan. Mm. So Very good. And he had got us in 67. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Could you please um, explain to us how to, um, the steps to make sure we're on the right path of bhakti, that we're in the right mood? Well, we can't really always be sure. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when uh, Prabhupada was 
confronted with uh, some people that were very intimately connected with him, like his secretaries, who left frontline service or left altogether, even backline service. He said, we shouldn't be surprised how many people leave the movement. We, we should be surprised how many people stay with it. So uh, there's no, no uh, a definite way to know if we're making advancement or if our, our hearts are becoming devotional or they cease to become steel framed, except by consulting with others who we consider to be more advanced than we are. That's, that's uh, the only way we can find out. And if they think that what we're doing is, is the right thing, we, we can continue doing it, even if it, if it may take many lifetimes to get to the point of, of, of loving Krishna. We're on the right track. Yes? There's a lady there that wants to ask something, or say something. So what, what do you think about that? I think you're right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So if there's nothing else, I think our time's up. We'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs>